Najib Razak told the court that he trusted SRC's board of directors, a statement he made more than once, as it comprised of highly qualified individuals. He trusted them so much that he didn't meet them for seven years. By the Malaysian Insight, this is The People vs. Najib Razak. Follow us into the courtroom where it all happens. I'm Patrick Teo. Dressed in a bright blue suit and a gold tie, Najib was escorted to Judge Mohammad Nazlan Mohammad Ghazali's courtroom by a handful of supporters this morning. By his side was Anwar Musa, the Secretary General of AMNO, the political party Najib once led. Najib took a seat in the accused dock instead of the witness stand. His two yellow cushions made an appearance for the first time in three weeks. The seat in the witness stand is already cushioned, after all. Lawyers from both the prosecution and defence continued to argue over the need to bring in a handwriting expert to verify the former PM's signature. Yesterday, Najib's lawyers had put in an application to bring in one Dr. Stephen, a handwriting expert from Australia. Najib had told the court that he hadn't signed certain documents produced in court, despite having earlier told the MACC otherwise. He now suspects his signatures were forged. Today, Prosecutor V. Sitambaram alleged that the defence had no game plan and were clutching at straws. He even accused Najib's lawyers of obstructing justice. Sitam asked that the judge throw out the application. We're not playing poker here. It's not a game. It's justice, the prosecutor said. Najib's lawyer, Havindajid or Harvey, disagreed with the prosecutor. He said the need for an expert wouldn't arise if someone saw Najib sign the documents, but in this case, no one did. Harvey also assured Judge Nazlan that calling in the expert will not delay the trial unnecessarily, but would be in keeping with seeing justice done. Following a short break, Najib's lead counsel, Shafi Abdullah, took over and reiterated what Harvey said, that the expert won't delay the trial. Shafi argued that it was the prosecution's responsibility to provide Najib with the expert. He claimed that they were not being fair to the former PM, showing him documents bearing his signatures without telling him if they were copies or the original. The lawyer said the question of who was behind the forgery had to be answered. To that, Sitam responded by saying that the application was just to verify if the signatures were forgeries, not the authenticity of the documents. After hearing both sides of the argument, Judge Naslan said he will make his decision regarding the application the next day, and court broke for lunch. Najib, who had remained expressionless throughout the submission, was out of the courtroom and in his awaiting car in a flash. When court resumed, Najib took his place on the witness stand for his cross-examination. Sitam began by showing him a letter from former SRC CEO Nick Faisal Arif Kamil. It was dated September 2, 2013 and outlined the reasons SRC was formed. The prosecutor asked whether all reporting in SRC was referred to Najib. No, came the reply. The onus is on SRC to report certain matters directly to me, Najib said. But the letter states that SRC's board was to report to the Prime Minister, the prosecutor quizzed. Najib disagreed. He argued that SRC's memorandum and articles of association did not say that. He said they should have followed the memorandum instead of the letter. When it came to SRC's progress, the former leader said, he was never informed of it in a complete fashion. Sitam suggested that Najib never took interest in the company, so much so he did not meet the board of directors for seven years. But Najib said he trusted them. He added that it was MOF Inc. who should have informed him about SRC activities. 
Sitam then honed in on SRC's second 2 billion ringgit loan from KWAP. The retirement fund gave two 2 billion ringgit loans to the company and both came with a government guarantee. The prosecutor told Najib he should have recused himself from the cabinet meeting that approved the second government guarantee. He could have influenced the other ministers. But Najib disagreed. Did you inform the cabinet that SRC had not done anything with the first KWAP loan? No, I didn't, Najib said. When Sitam suggested that SRC had nothing to show from the 4 billion ringgit loan from KWAP, Najib for once agreed. Is SRC's biggest achievement parking 3.6 billion ringgit in Swiss banks? The prosecutor asked. No, I disagree, Najib said. The second loan was approved because I was hoping that SRC would do better. I trusted the board. It comprised of highly qualified individuals. I put it to you that you had a personal interest in SRC and the fact that 42 million ringgit in your account confirms this, Sitam said. Once again, Najib disagreed. The prosecutor then suggested that Najib played a role in speeding up the loans and government guarantees in SRC. Yes, I played a role, but I did not expedite the loan, the former PM replied. And with that, proceedings adjourned for the day. The trial will continue tomorrow. This podcast was written and mixed by Revati Supramaniam and Yappik Kwan. I'm Patrick Teo.